There you are. How are you? Good, I hope. This week we're talking about organic farming. Where your food comes from, how it was prepared, the processes it underwent. Do you care? You should. As you may know, in my previous life, I was a dental surgeon, and together with my medical colleagues, we came under increasing pressure for what was seen to be over-prescribing of antibiotics and the problem of antibiotic-resistant organisms, so-called superbugs, causing serious problems. This, of course, ignored the antibiotics routinely given to livestock to prevent infections, just in case. In overcrowded farming environments, in the attempt to produce the cheapest possible product, these antibiotics enter our food chain, and eventually us and have a knock-on effect when it comes to antibiotic resistance. It certainly will concern you and you will care when you're lying in a hospital bed and the medics are desperately trying to find an antibiotic that will cure your infection. It is also a concern when beef turns out to be actually horse meat and baby food is contaminated with melamine. Yes, that stuff your wardrobe is made of as it increases the protein content and so makes the formula a higher perceived value. So far in this world, organic certification is the only recognized standard which is audited and inspected. Organic is therefore seen as genuine and safe. The USA has, as usual, set themselves up as the world's policemen in this respect. Any business involved with food production can be organically certified, ranging from farmers, processors, retailers, and restaurants. Even clothing can be certified, as it comes from organically grown fibres. Produce can be labelled 100% organic, meaning free from nasties. But to be organic, it only has to be 95% free, and containing organic as low as 70%. The cost to a farmer ranges from $400 US dollars to over $4,000 yearly. Unless you sell less than $5,000 a year, in which case you can call your product organic, but it doesn't have to be certified. As a farmer in the Philippines probably earns about a thousand dollars a year, he can call his produce anything he likes. The other problem is there is no international binding agreement on what is organic and what isn't. I've heard of some countries insisting that any import must be organic and charging farmers $25,000 to prove this effectively an import tax. In certain countries, simply ask your cousin to put an organic looking stamp on a piece of paper and hey, job done. So organic standards are a moving target. So how and what can we trust? Good question. We know our farmers. We know and have seen what they use. We know they can't afford chemical fertilizers or pest control let alone afford organic certification. Local farmers are being educated by those we work with. Louis Sena from Davao, for instance, who show how to grow using organic principles. Fertilizers are made from a mixture of seaweed and fermented worm casts. Insect damage is prevented by wrapping fruit in plastic bags or by spraying with a potent mixture of chili, garlic and ginger. I love it, but apparently the bugs don't. But can you trust us? Well, I certainly hope so. But this is why we are developing a blockchain system to take trust out of the equation. Our system will allow you to scan a barcode or something similar on the back of a packet of whatever you bought. And that will show you the complete chain, the complete journey from field to your table. There is a saying in German, that Trauen is good, aber controller is better. Trust is good, but checks are better. Blockchain does exactly that, and this is a system we're developing in association with the University of Leicester, so you know exactly what you are buying, where it came from, the GPS of the bush it was harvested from, how it was processed, etc. Looking at last week's update on ethical farming and fair trade, this is why we say what we produce is an ethically produced product at a fair price grown either organically or to organic standards, which you yourself can certify using blockchain and so reducing costs. This benefits you and the farmers, but a whole raft of middlemen and certification bodies will be missing out. 
oh dear, how sad, never mind. But with fake farm labels, money going anywhere but back to the farmers under so-called fair trade schemes, and organic standards open to, at best, misinterpretation and at worst fraud, the traditional policing of our food has been shown to be not quite as it should. So let's get back to basics. It's between you and the farmer, and we are simply here to help that journey. Simple, clean, transparent. So until next week, bye-bye.